Just listen, listen to his voice, for he will lead you in every step you are to take, and don't hold back, don't hold back, but let him lead you in every way, for where you sit, Lord, I says I sin I say just let me have my way in you for I will open up your ears to hear my voice and see that I am the God who is leading you hallelujah Hallelujah. Mm, yes Lord Let that minister comfort to you, Crystal. Minister to your heart. And if some of those words comforted some of the rest of you, you take it too. Hallelujah. Because God's love is for every one of you and your welfare. Amen. Can I have an amen out there? Amen. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Amen. Give our young people a hand as they're dismissed. God bless you, kids and young people. You are dismissed. Well, thanks for coming out tonight. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Harvest Time Church. So good to see your faces, and uh, uh, thank you for coming out. Thank God for this little cool down. What do you say, huh? I mean, <laughs> a little cool down in the weather. I know we had that hot streak earlier, so we always enjoy uh, cool weather. But how many of you know you can come to the church, to the church whether it's cool out or hot out? We got a air conditioner, so hey, just come on in and enjoy that. So but good to see everybody. We're going to go ahead and receive our tithes and offerings tonight before we get to the word. And then Cindy's got an announcement or two uh, to give. And so if you need an envelope, you can grab one right there in front of you. We're going to honor God with our tithes and offerings. Let me encourage you with the scripture here as we get ready to give tonight from Proverbs chapter 11. I shared this on Sunday, but notice uh, God says in his word, there is one who scatters or who gives yet increases more and there is one who withholds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The generous soul will be made rich, and he who waters will also be watered himself. What a wonderful truth from God's word that you can be assured that when you give, you'll not have less than. God said with, there, there's a principle in his kingdom that when you give and you sow, God says he'll make sure that you increase. Some of you know God's been faithful to that. And, but... Uh, those who withhold more than is right, it leads to poverty. This is just opposite of the world because the world says, you know, if you hold on, you keep, you know, you'll be able to have more. But if I, if I release or give, I'll have less. But God says in my kingdom, it's just opposite. When you give or scatter, you increase. But if you hold more than is right, it comes to poverty. Thank God the generous soul will be made rich and he who waters will be watered himself. Father, thank you for these precious promises as we honor you tonight with our giving. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that you provide every need of every person, uh, Father, in the kingdom of God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, for these wonderful truths, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Let's make our declaration of faith together. We acknowledge you together as our all-sufficient God, our God of the more than enough, our God of the full supply. Thank you, Lord, for abundance, both in our lives and in our church, in Jesus' name, amen. I'll go ahead, ushers. Honey, come on up with a couple of announcements. Well, you want to help me out with this first one? About, okay, sure. Um, well, August 11th, all of you know, is a big Sunday around here. Yes. We have big news to share. Right. And we're excited about it. You know, I put on Facebook today on the HTC Facebook site. Are you curious? Right. So uh, um, on that particular Sunday mound, we want everybody to be here, uh, the whole church family. You know, right. the church is about, on any given Sunday, about 50% of our congregation is not here. And on Wednesday night, about 80%, 90% is not here. We want everybody all in one place at one time. Right. You know how it is as a parent when you have to repeat yourself? Right. You're like, We don't want to repeat ourselves. <laughs> In other words, what we say on the 11th, we yes, want everybody to hear for the first time. We want everybody to be here together. Okay. And it's really fun, too. It's not, it's not like, 
oh, it's good. Yeah. It's fun news and it's right. just something the Lord has shown us and, and we want to share it with everybody else. So that's a week from this Sunday on August yes. the 11th. So everybody be here on August service. 11th. Even if you say I'm only a Wednesday nighter, well then you won't get to hear it. So come on Sunday morning. <laughs> right. Why don't you talk about what's yes, going on tomorrow gleaners. morning? Okay, so tomorrow, was he just cutting me off? Yeah. Is that what you took that as? No. He was... <laughs> okay, so tomorrow morning, tomorrow morning is the first of many times that this is going to happen. On the first and third Wednesday of every, uh, Thursday of every month, uh, Steve Roberson has worked it out with the senior gleaners. They will be bringing groceries here to the church. And these are not like junk groceries. It's fresh produce, dairy, meat products, um, non-perishable products. I saw the list. I'm like, wow, this is such a blessing to right. our church and to the people of our community. So if you need, pe if you know people that need food, it would just be a blessing to them. Or if you just want to come get some, it's open to everybody. Right. And so it'll be tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. Um, the food will be ready to be picked up. It'll be bagged for you. And it's wow. a giveaway. There's it's, no, it's free. There's nothing that you have to do. There's nothing. You just come and receive. It's free. And you might get prayed for while you're here. Yeah. How about that? So that'll be the first and the third Thursday of every month. And really, it's in, invite people to come. Why not? It's first come, first serve. When it's gone, it's and gone. And then what about those that want to help? Uh, yes, tomorrow we have enough help. We but if you want tomorrow. to volunteer to help with this particular uh, ministry in the church as it grows, and I'm sure, just like what they do at the salt mine, I mean, it gets bigger and bigger constantly, right. that we'll need more help as we go. So if it's something you'd like to be involved in, my goodness, let us know. Call the church office. Talk to us. We will hook you up, okay? And then one other thing, on August 28th, you'll see in the bulletin that there is a 24-hour prayer going on here at the church. It starts on Wednesday morning at 9 o'clock a.m., and it will go until Thursday morning at 9 o'clock a.m. Right. And it's, it's a regional prayer meeting. Um, during the month of August, some at some point every single day, different churches will be having prayer meetings in their church so that in our region of this northern California metropolis around here, there will be prayer for our churches every hour of every day for the month of August. Right. And so we're excited to participate with this. And so we have in the information area a sign-up sheet if you want to be part of that to come and pray you can sign up for an hour increment of time or you know whatever works for you 15 minutes Joan Lucky signed up for four hours I said woo you are a trooper and yeah. she said well I might bring a pillow too because she signed up for midnight all right on yeah huh? how about that so um, we would love for you to be part of it it doesn't mean that you have to stand up here and lead in prayer it means that you are part of prayer and I mean right. think about it 24 hours right. it's not that we impress God by praying for 24 hours but we certainly are touching heaven and moving yes. earth when we make commitments like that so right. that's on August 28th and you can sign up in the foyer all right thank oh, you honey that's like a week away. Family right camp right up. right right next Thursday Friday Saturday family Woo! camp at Lake of the Springs we have quite a few families signed up I'm getting pretty jazzed about it people are coming in giving me their confirmation numbers I need your confirmation number of your reservation after you make your reservation send it to the office so that when you get there they can tell you because I will have told them to attach this to your reservation number where we are because we all want to be together so be sure and follow through with that. Everything you need to know about the camping trip is out in the foyer. All right. Awesome. So a lot of stuff going on. It's busy summer. So hook up and be a part of, of what God's doing. All right. You ready for the word tonight? Yes, sir. We got about a half hour. So let's just get right to it. And let's just thank God for his word. Father, we thank you for your precious, holy written word today. And as we look, Father, at your word, we trust the Holy Spirit to... Give me utterance and unction, Lord, that it might minister to every heart, that everyone would be strengthened and encouraged and uplifted today. Father, acknowledging you that you are a wonderful Heavenly Father that provides for every one of our needs in a wonderful way. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The title of my message tonight is Heaven's Constant Supply. Heaven's Constant or Heaven's Continual Supply. How many of you understand tonight that when you got saved, the day you made Jesus Christ 
the Lord of your life. You, you, you call them, you pray to prayer similar to, Father, I thank you uh, uh, for sending Jesus. I make him the Lord of my life. I, I acknowledge him. Whatever the words might be, anything like that, you were born again, you were saved. And the day that that happened, you were, you tra you were uh, transformed and, and, and transitioned into another kingdom, another family. Right? Amen. You, you, were, you, you, were, you switched from, to, from the, the family or, or the kingdom of darkness, as the scripture says, to the kingdom of God, into God's family. Mm, that's good news, is it not? I mean, there's a lot of good families we might think we'd be in, and maybe you're in a good family right now, but I tell you, when you got in God's family, how many of you know you got something powerful going on for you and I? And so, uh, as a member of the family of God and of the household of God, how many of you know it's the heaven, our Father's responsibility to take care of us? Amen. Just like it's the responsibility of those of us that are dads, uh, you know, when our kids are growing up and that we we take care of our kids you know i remember growing up with my parents and my parents we had a good family and i don't know not everybody can say this maybe but my parents stayed together and and they were as far as i can tell if they had issues i never knew about it if they had problems which i'm sure they did i never knew about it uh because growing up they just I, i've always felt secure i always felt like uh Everything was provided for. If I needed food, I went to the refrigerator and got it, you know. Um, as a kid, uh, as, as a child, I was taken care of. And how many of you know we are called children of God? In other words, the fact that he's our father means if the father, you've got to have kids or you're not a father. Right? And so as a father and we're in his kingdom, the father, God, is saying, because you are now in my family, I am obligated, not only obligated, but I will take care of you. Amen. And I will provide for you and I will minister to you. And so uh, we all live in a world that's kind of a mess. Some of you understand that, right? And this is why it's so important that Jesus said, hey, listen, even though you live in the world, you're not of the world. Amen. Remember that? He said that right before he went into his heaven. He said, hey, guys, you're in the world, but you're not of the world. You are now of my kingdom and of heaven's kingdom. And so though we live in the world, the world doesn't supply us our needs. The world is not our source. Our God, our Father, the kingdom of heaven is our source of supply, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically, whether it's financially, emotionally, in your family, whatever supplies needs that we have, we, we draw them from our Father, from heaven, from the kingdom. And how many of you think our Heavenly Father is a pretty good dad? Right? Right? And how many of you think that in his kingdom there's an endless supply? Now that doesn't mean we don't have lack and opportunities to trust God because we all do. But that's a time when we need to put our focus on the Lord. That's our time where we can exercise our trust in God. And I'm going to show you and touch on a little bit of that tonight. So how, how can you draw from the Lord and let him know you're trusting him? whenever there's a lack or, or there's, a, there's a need. I want to first of all look at Ephesians um, chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. And it says here, the Apostle Paul by the Spirit says, You he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sin. This is, this is who we were before we got saved. You were dead in trespasses and sin, but he made you alive in which you once walked according to the course of the world. You used to be walking in this way. Uh, the, the prince of the power of the air, according to the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, drop down, among whom we all once or used to conduct ourselves in the lust of the flesh, fulfilling the flesh and desires of the mind, whereby children, uh, na by nature children of wrath, just as others. This is how we were before we were saved. But when we got saved, notice verse 4, but God. Everybody say, but God. Yeah. Thanks for all the but gods in the Bible. Right. So when you read something like that, keep reading because you're going to get to the good part that involves you. But God, who is rich in judgment. No. no. He's rich in mercy. Yes. Right. 
He's rich in love. He's rich in grace because of his great love, which he loved us even when we were dead. He's talking about spiritually dead. In trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. In other words, the day we got saved, the day we called upon him, for by grace you have been saved. Uh, and, and he has raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Praise God. We're seated with Christ. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Praise God. I don't know what all the other ages that are that's going to come and there's going to be many dispensation and ages after this church age. But whatever they are, they're all going to be rich with his grace Amen. and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. So whatever the future eons, eternity hold for us, this we know. It's full of his grace and his kindness in Christ. Mm. Amen. In other words, what we are experiencing with his love and grace never ends. <laughs> For by grace you have been saved through faith, that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Amen. Praise God. If the greatest gift of salvation is by grace and not of yourself, then how many of you know any other thing you receive from God is by grace? Praise God. Not of ourselves. Yes, All through Jesus. Drop down. Not of works, lest anyone could boast. None of us can brag about it. After all, we weren't there when Jesus was on the cross, right? right. We came along later and just received all that he did for us. For we're his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, God has an awesome plan for our lives. As we walk into it. Now, drop down to Ephesians chapter 3. Oh, I'm sorry, 19. Go, go back to there. Now, therefore, speaking of those who are in Christ, all of us, you are, no, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Mm. Wow, that's good news, isn't it? We are members of God's household. You are of God's family. You took on his name. Right? We're Christians. Christ. Christians. If Jesus is your Lord, just like just like our kids take on our name when we were born again in the spirit, we became a part of his family and we take on his name, Christ Christians. Mm. Praise God. And our daddy God, our heavenly father says, you're my son, you're my daughter, you're my responsibility. I got your back. Yes, I'm going to take care of you. In every way, I don't just take care of one need, but every need you could ever possibly have in your entire life. I'm your daddy. I'm going to take care of you. I'm your father. You are of my household. Praise God. Let's look at Colossians chapter uh, 1. Notice it says, giving thanks to the father. Again, in the new covenant, did you know that term father is not found in the Old Testament? That's right. It was Lord God, uh, Almighty, and those are all awesome names for God. You know, all these other names. That's right. You don't see Father. Jesus was the first one who introduced God as a father because he being the son of God, obviously the family connection. Amen. And so now, but now that we're born again in the new covenant, now God is just not Father God, Lord God Almighty of Israel. Now he is our father. Amen. We have a relationship with God with the Father that those in the Old Covenant never had through the blood. So we give thanks. What's our part? Our, your part is to give thanks. Yes, it is. Thank you. Right? So how do you say, Lord, I need, I need to draw. I have a need that I need my Father to meet. What do you do? Have to try to earn it or try to deserve it somehow? No. You just give thanks Amen. to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Notice the Father qualified you through the blood. How many of you glad none of you have to, we don't have to qualify ourselves, right? It's the blood that qualified us. And the Father says that God says, and if the Father says, I qualify you to be a partaker of your rich inheritance in the saints, then how many of you know if the Father qualified us, no one can disqualify us. 
Not your past, not your mistakes, not your devil, not those who try to accuse you, not the enemy. No one, because the Father is greater than all. And he says, you're my son, my daughter. You are qualified because of the blood of Jesus and you're partakers. You have a rich inheritance in Christ. For he has delivered us from the power of darkness. Notice, and conveyed or translated us into the kingdom of the son of his love. That's Jesus. In whom we have redemption. Not going to. We have it now through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. What a beautiful picture of the father saying, you are delivered from the power of darkness, the grip of darkness, and now you have been translated into God's kingdom. And he says, I'm your father and I'm going to take care. You have a rich inheritance. And if you would just say thank you and give me praise and give me thanks for whatever it is you need. He said, that's going to release your faith and I'm going to pour whatever it is you need into your life. Not why God and how come me, but even in the midst of trials, say, Lord, I just want to thank you. Even though this apparent lack looks like I'm backed up and looks like I don't know where my needs are coming from. But Lord, I thank you. I am in your kingdom and you meet every need. I just want to give you praise. How many of you know that's, that's, that's our part? To give thanks to the Lord uh, who qualifies us for our rich inheritance. How many of you understand this is the, the nature of Jesus to, to, to supply every need. Uh, I, I want to, in fact, I want to go to a familiar scripture in Philippians chapter um, 4, a familiar scripture that talks about uh, one we quote quite often, my God supplies what? All, all my need. Philippians 4, 19. God supplies all my need according to what? His riches in where? Glory by Christ Jesus. Notice that God says that he supplies all your needs, not according to the riches of the earth or the supply of the earth, because if that's the case, we're in a recession and we're always hearing about lack here, lack there. But God says your needs are not met according to the world's resources, but according to his riches and glory, which there's never a lack. How many of you know heaven does not have recessions? And God can see to it that our needs are met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Mm. God shall supply. My God, our Father shall supply every need. Let's say that together because it's very personal. Paul made it personal. He said, my God. Let's say it together. And my God shall supply all. Let's make it personal. All my needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Let's say it again and lift one hand up to the Lord. And my God shall supply all my need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Because God does not supply our needs according to the world. Because we're not of the world. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. So God doesn't look at the world's resources and say, that's how I'm going to take care of that spiritual need. Even, how many of you know, even the financial need, uh, there, the, the, you have, might have a financial need tonight, and we know the finances are in this world. But how many of you know, even in that realm, God, God can supply supernaturally? Yes, Amen. In fact, did you know that the very first miracle that Jesus did was a provision, provisional miracle? The very first one. The Bible says there was a young couple getting married in a city called Canaan there in Israel. And Jesus, uh, Mary's, Jesus' mother Mary was invited. And the Bible says Jesus and his disciples were invited to this wedding. And so Jesus shows up at the wedding. He's, he's not even started, hardly started his ministry yet. They show up to the wedding and all of a sudden, apparently more people showed up than they expected. And they started running out of wine. And so Jesus' mom says, hey, Jesus, we got a problem here. <laughs> uh, you know, the, 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 we're running out of wine here. And the, the, married, the newly, newlywed couple, they're a little bit going to be embarrassed. And this is not a good situation. And Jesus like, and so he says, and so Mary, Jesus' mother, turns to the servants and says, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Right. And so Jesus saw these big pots, probably five, six gallons, Two or three, of, I think three of them. And he says, hey guys, fill them up with water. And the Bible says that the servants filled them to the brim. I like that attitude. 
I mean, just, you know, it could have filled it halfway, three quarters. They just, they sense something's going on. And they fill those water pots all the way to the brim. And so when they took those water pots into the, 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 the host of the wedding and they drew out that water, the water had turned to wine. Not just any kind of wine, but when the, 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 the host there tasted it, he, he said, hey, how is it that most people serve the good wine first and when everybody gets a little bit too much, then they bring the bad wine in. But he said, you save the best for last. How many of you know Jesus provided a provisional miracle there? Save that whole family from embarrassment. How many of you know Jesus is, is interested in keeping you from being embarrassed? by not being able to pay your rent, your PG, your mortgage, right. being, how many of you know your, your car? Jesus says, I can save you embarrassment Amen. and provide your needs. I don't care if it's supernatural. Obviously the water turning into wine in a matter of, of a minute or two is some kind of acceleration. That's right. Amen. Right? And so this is the heart of Jesus for us to meet us, our, take care of us and to meet our needs and to spare us from lack and to spare us from, from you know, people trying to come against us saying, why, why don't you take care of your needs? How many of you know that young couple, they got off to, they could have got off to a horrible start, but they got off to an awesome start. <laughs> right? All because of Jesus. So the first miracle was a provisional miracle. Jesus wants to take care of us. That doesn't mean we're never going to be challenged with needs, just like that young couple was challenged with a need. Maybe they thought the wine was going to be a close call. They thought, honey, you know, man, it's going to be close. If, if all of the, 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 those that are invited, if they all show up, it's going to be close. And, and they probably did what people did today. You know, most of the time, only about half the people you invite show up. That's we'll probably be fine. But probably when Jesus showed up, everybody showed up. And it's like, oh, we got a problem. They were probably nervous the whole time. But how many of you know Jesus spared them Amen. and took care of them? Just like he, and he accelerated. He compressed time. Because how many of you know technically it's going to take a whole lot of time for, to get wine? Come on. In fact, I don't even know if you can get wine out of water. You got to put a few grapes in there at least. <laughs> right? But even when you got the grapes... You can pray, and it takes time, but Jesus compressed time. And how many of you know he can compress time for you too? And accelerate things and make things happen a lot faster. This is his heart for, for us, for, for God's, for, for his people. You know, there was another time Jesus did a ton of provisional. We know that he's a healer and a lot of healing miracles, but he did a ton of provisional miracles too. There was one time that uh, Jesus, there was this huge multitude that was following him. The Bible says about 4,000 men plus all their wives and kids. So probably over 10,000 people were following Jesus. And for three days, they were with him out in the desert, in the wilderness. And they, and they were hungry and there was no food. I mean, 10,000 people, you can't just go to the store and buy something. Plus they're way out there. And so the disciples are telling Jesus, said, Jesus, we got a problem. These 10,000 people or so have been following us for three days. They're all tired. They're weary. They're hungry. What are we going to do? Right. Even if we went to the store, we don't have enough money to buy everybody. What did Jesus say? Well, what are we going to do? Oh, how many of you know Jesus is going to take care of something supernaturally? That's right. Come on. And so what did he say? He says, well, what do we got? And they said, well, we've got, and they counted them out, seven loaves and two fishes. And, and the disciples were like, are you kidding me, Lord? <laughs> I mean, you can read between the lines. Are you kidding me? And they said it. How are we going to feed all these people with seven loaves and two fish? <laughs> it's not going to happen. And the Bible says this. And Jesus said, listen, here's what we're going to do. You get everybody and you separate, tell them to sit in groups of fifties and hundreds. Everybody's sitting down. Relax. How many of you know, if you want something from Jesus, rest. Right. Quit stressing. Jesus said, everybody sit down, quit stressing, relax, sit, I'm going to take care of you. And so they all sat down and Jesus took those loaves and two fish and he looked up to heaven and the Bible says, and when he gave thanks, 
When he gave thanks, they broke the bread and the bread began to multiply. That must have been awesome to see. I mean, just all the disciples like, okay, we got seven loaves. After the seventh one, whoa, let's keep coming right out of that basket. How many of you know that would be pretty cool to, to be there and to see those loaves and those fishes just keep coming out of those, of those, those baskets? And they broke. And when Jesus gave thanks, they multiplied. Listen, there's a, there's a key there. When you and I give thanks, God, come on, whatever you have, he'll multiply. Yes. Maybe you don't have much tonight. You don't have a house. You don't have, all, I do, all I have is a car and it's in danger. It's, it's, I don't know how I made it to church tonight. How many of you know, if you just give God thanks for what you have. Lord, I thank you for this. Forgive me, jalopy. But it's, you know, it, it, it needs oil and it's coughs and spits and it's got two bald tires and one of them the, the, the wires are showing uh, you know on one of the tires and I'm not even sure if I'm going to make it home but you know what Lord I, want, I just want to thank you for it yes. because at least I got something Lord. I just want to praise you for that yes. right now I give you thanks and when you start thanking him God starts putting multiplying power into effect just like when he gave thanks for the loaves and the fishes that seemed like way too less lack it looked like lack. And the disciples said, are you kidding me, Lord? And Jesus said, just start thanking God and God's going to start multiplying whatever you have. Mm. Amen. That's good preaching right that there. Whatever you have, even if it's not enough, start thanking God for it. That's right. Amen. You look in your bank book. Never mind the bank book. That's the last one. You go online. <laughs> right? You go online, check my account, passcode, all that. And you look at that and you say, man, that's a sad looking number. <laughs> oh, Lord. Wait a minute. I could get discouraged. I could get depressed. But, Lord, I just want to thank you for that meager amount right there. Even though I know next week I got the house payment or the car payment or I got to pay this bill or that bill. Right now, that account says there's no way this is going to happen. But Lord, for that little amount right there, I just want to give you thanks for it. I just want to praise you that, Lord, yes. you supply every need. I thank you for that. Yes. And according to the principle that Jesus set in motion, when you thank God for something you know is not enough to feed the 10,000, it starts multiplying. Rather than why, God, how come? No, start giving God praise. Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Come on. Amen. Even our kids, we teach them that. They're whining and complaining. I want a new toy. I want a new, I want a new bike. I want a new this. You just bought them one. And, and what do you tell them? You little snot-nosed kid. Listen, if you don't start being thankful for what you have, don't expect much more. Right? right. It's true. It's true. But when our kids start saying thanks, mom and dad, we're like, whoa. That's awesome. Yeah, that's right. And what does your heart want to do? <laughs> what can I do for you? Yeah, give them more. Right? Mm -hmm. And so even in the midst of lack, and by the way, when you look at that online and you said, because Jesus said, listen, start letting your words work for you. You just say, listen, I talk to you. I Listen, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. You start increasing. I said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not lack. Amen. Lord, and I thank you for every need. Hallelujah. Supplied. Start giving him praise and start magnifying. And you say, how's God going to do it? I don't, I have no idea. I said, I have no idea, and you probably don't either. That's right. But how many of you know we could be here for till midnight telling testimonies? That's right. I remember one of the greatest testimonies Cindy and I ever had was when we were in Bible school, and the second year of Bible school was about to start, and I need to have six or six hundred dollars for a down payment. We're talking about back in the in the late eighties, where six hundred dollars a lot is a lot of money now, but it was right. more then. Right. Had a job making five six dollars an hour, and you know, and and so, but I needed six hundred dollars, and we lived in an apartment, and we lived in downstairs, and there was an upstairs neighbor we said hi to from time to time, but didn't really know him. And we had a piano, and Cindy would sit down and play the piano every once in a while in our apartment. And, and worship God. And when Cindy sits at the piano, just the anointing flows. If, you, you, if you've been around here, you understand that. And so it was, it was coming right up to the time where I needed this $600 for my tuition for Bible school. And we just said, Lord, we just, 
we know enough even back then to say, Lord, we know you're our provider. We just thank you. We don't know how it's coming. We don't know how it's going to take place. But you call us here. You call us to go to school. So it's your responsibility to take care of us. So we just thank you for providing that need. And so the, actually it might have been the day before or the day of that I needed the money. He came downstairs one day, knocked on our door and said, hey, listen, I know we've just said hi here and there. But he said, you know, he said, your wife plays the piano and it just comes right up through to the second floor. And it's so beautiful and just blesses me. Oh. Worshiping God. And he said, and he said, I just feel so blessed. And I just feel, is there, he says, could you guys use about $600? <laughs> and he pulled out a six hundred, six $100 bills. I just grabbed it before I could even, I said, yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Amen. And thanked him for his, his kindness. And God used him. How many of you know God's got people he can use? that you know nothing about yes, that's right. that can do something for you tomorrow Amen. or next week or tonight. Come on. Come on. And it's not for us to try to figure out. You know, uh, th there was an, uh, an awesome story in, in the Gospels uh, when uh, uh, the disciples, Jesus and the disciples, their taxes were due. And um, uh, what we call temple tax, what they call temple tax, the whole thing was kind of messed up. But nonetheless, Jesus was like, listen, we don't want to offend them. But they, they didn't have the temple tax money. And Jesus said, listen, this tax money wasn't, they didn't have the money. He said, Peter, here's what I want you to do. Now, Peter's a fisherman. He fishes with boats and nets. But Jesus told Peter, I said, here's what we're going to do. Here's what I want you to do, Peter. Go down to the, to the lake. And forget about your boat and your net and take a, 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 your fishing pole. Put a hook on it. And take your hook and cast it into the sea. And so Peter goes down to the, to the dock there and put, gets a fishing pole, which he probably had to dig out from somewhere, puts a hook on it and splash. And so he's sitting on the dock of the bay, sitting on the dock of the bay. <laughs> Watching the time. So he's sitting there and all of a sudden he gets a bite and catches a hook. Because Jesus told him, he said, listen, put your hook in the water and the first fish you pull up, there's going to be money in its mouth. And that money is going to be just the right amount to take care of our need. And then go take care of it. So Peter pulls the fish, the hook in, and sure enough, the first fish he gets there's a gold coin or some, some kind of coin, and he takes it out, and he, that need, how many of you know, is supernaturally provided for? Amen. How many of you know God's got ways to take care of us? And like I say, every time I mention that scripture, it always makes me think about all the things that had to happen before that happened. In other words, God's thinking about your need way before you have it. Because that gold coin or whatever it was that was sitting down there at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, how many of you know somebody accidentally dropped it? Right? They're out fishing or something and they grabbed their, wanted to grab some bait or something and, and their coin, oh no, ugh, gone. Or somebody else was filling whatever and, and just threw a coin out there out of anger or something sometime or another. And it went right down to the bottom. Who knows how long it was been there? Right, right. But how many of you know God's thinking about Peter however long ago before that happened? Yeah. Right? Not only that, he had to direct that fish to go down there and put, bite that in his mouth and don't swallow it. Right. Come on. Not only that, after he, the fish gets in his mouth, God has to direct that fish to go right for that hook. You got, the, you got the money in your mouth, which you cannot swallow. And by the way, you're going to have to get on that hook, too. All of which the fish never wanted to do, probably none of it. He probably wasn't interested in the gold coin, and he wasn't interested in getting on that hook. But nonetheless, God said, you're doing it. And so they got the hook, and the need was taken care of. Supernatural provision. Mm. And how many of you know... God can do the same thing for you and I. And so whenever we're facing any kind of a lack, rather than being down and discouraged, just say, Lord, I thank you that you provide every need in my life. I want to worship you. I want to, I want to let you know how much I appreciate it. 
And this is one of the reasons I wrote The Force of Joy, because joy and rejoicing and thanksgiving is the language of faith. And when we rejoice and when we thank God and when we give Him praise, even in the midst of lack for what we have and for His provision, for what He's going to do, that stirs the heart of God to move on our behalf. Amen. 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 Let's just lift our hands right now and give Him thanks. Let's just get a little head start. What do you say? Let's just get a little head start because I don't know, some of you maybe tonight you've got needs uh, that, that I, I don't know nothing about, but God knows. And so, Lord, we just praise you that you, 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 you take care of every need. I thank you, Lord Jesus. Just, just start praising them out loud in your, own, in your own words. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you take care of every need. Thank you, Father. For the Lord is our shepherd, we shall not lack. And we give you praise, Lord Jesus. We thank you. We, we worship you, Lord Jesus. Father, we refuse to be discouraged and we look to your great provision, your riches in glory. In Christ Jesus. And so, Father, we just want to let you know we are so thankful tonight that we are part of your family. We are of the household and the family of our God, our Heavenly Father. And we are your children. And as our Heavenly Father, you take care of your sons and daughters. So, Lord, we just present every need to you tonight. Whether it's a spiritual need, a physical need, a financial need, an emotional need, whatever it might be, Lord, we know that you supply according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. We want to thank you for it, Lord. We want to give you praise. Here I am with all I have. I raise my hands to worship you. you. Say thank you. thank you, thank you for everything. It's who you are. You cover me, you touch my heart. I want to say thank, thank you. you, thank you. Father, I just speak peace. I speak rest over every heart tonight. Rest in their mind. Rest in your emotions tonight. I say peace be still. May the storm of worry or fret or anxiety, may it all be calm. May your heart and mind be at rest tonight, knowing that your Heavenly Father takes care of the birds of the air. How much more is he going to take care of you? How much more is he going to provide for you? And so, Father, we thank you for that. I thank you for peace, for rest. And we thank you, Lord, that you do miracles in every area of our lives for the glory of God. We praise you for it. We thank you for it. I want to lead all of you in a prayer tonight. I feel led of the Lord just to lead you in this prayer. So. Uh, all of you just say this after me and I'm going to include in this prayer not only for your needs to be met but also if you need Jesus as your Lord I want to include that in your prayer as well and you can acknowledge Him tonight say this after me say Heavenly Father I thank you for sending Jesus to die on the cross for me 
I make Jesus Christ. Say it out loud. I make Jesus Christ the Lord of my life. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. I acknowledge you, Lord, as my Savior and my provider. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting every need of my life, spiritually, physically, and financially. Thank you, Father. I give you praise. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Well, I hope you're encouraged tonight. I know uh, I encourage myself with nothing else. And so we appreciate y'all being here. God bless you all. Thanks for coming. You are dismissed.